There's always been this bizarre rift between those who play video games and those who enjoy sports. The whole jocks vs nerd dynamic was a staple of movies and TV shows in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and oddly enough, sometimes even today. But sports and video games have been going hand in hand pretty much since the beginning. I mean, the classic Pong is essentially video table tennis if you really think about it. The Atari 2600, along with the second generation of consoles, had plenty of games based off of soccer, baseball, golf, even Olympic events. This continued onto the NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Dreamcast, PlayStation, so on and so forth. Even today, they're more popular than ever, with FIFA and Madden franchises making millions of dollars each year. Sports games, similar to other genres, have more often than not tried to replicate the real-world sport in video game form. Because of that, most if not all sports games today can be categorized as simulation games with realistic visuals and physics, role-playing elements with franchise or manager modes, and UI and announcers that resemble real-life broadcasts. But in the late 90s and early 2000s, this wasn't the only way to play sports games. Arcade-style variants to their more realistic counterparts started to crop up. Games like Midway's NBA Jam or NFL Blitz took a different approach to how it handled each sport. Arcadey fun took the forefront as spectacle and action replaced more realistic natures of some of these games. With power-ups, high scores, and ridiculous moves, the more nonsensical sports games started to become just as popular as a simulation style. The year is 2000, and EA is starting to flourish as the premier sports game publisher among its other titles like Medal of Honor, The Sims, or 007. To try and diversify its sports game portfolio, EA established a new publishing label known as EA Sports Big, in which numerous sports titles were developed under the Street subtitle. These were arcade style sports games based on the licensing rights of FIFA or the NBA, but one of my favorites was based on the National Football League, NFL Street. NFL Street was developed by EA Tiberon, the same team behind the Madden series, go figure. It was released in 2004 and was considered a huge success for EA, selling nearly a million copies and setting up for two more sequels in the following years. NFL Street became my go-to sports game in the early 2000s, primarily because I really enjoy the sport of football and because it relishes in its video game nature. It was a perfect combo. Discussing football rules and concepts can turn into a nightmare pretty quickly, but luckily NFL Street takes those rules and concepts and either throws them out the window or streamlines them. Basically, there's two sides of the game, offense and defense. The offense needs to take the ball down the field through running or passing plays and get into the end zone for a touchdown, netting them six points. The defense's job is to stop them from doing so. Each possession starts with the offense getting four downs or plays, and if you can't reach the first down marker, i.e. this yellow line here, in those four tries, they turn the ball over to the opposing team's offense. <laughs> I told you how to play this way, now look what happened. It can get way more complicated, so I'll leave it at that and just focus on what NFL Street does differently. NFL Street essentially takes the ideas of a traditional pickup football game with your friends and extends that to the real life NFL teams, or at least the rosters of those NFL teams in 2004. Seriously, it's like going back in time, it's it's weird. The only players still active in the NFL are Tom Brady and Drew Brees. So in NFL Street, anything goes. There's no penalties for offsides or pass interference, no special teams for things like kickoffs or field goals or punts, and the implementation of these new mechanics such as running trick plays, being able to pitch the ball, extra points counting as either one point by running or two points by passing, or a score limit, usually 36 points. Resembling the traditional pickup game style format, NFL Street does something interesting with its rosters. Primarily on each team there's a handful of players from different positions like wide receiver, cornerback, or defensive lineman. Each has stats that are tailored to their position, like wide receiver being able to catch better than an offensive lineman who has a better blocking skill. You have to create each lineup, both offense and defense, from the seven players you choose to comprise your team. This poses some interesting choices made prior to any actual gameplay taking place. You could pick all wide receivers or running backs for a very top-heavy offense, but on defense, these players won't be as good at defending or coverage and you might give up some easy touchdowns. Picking all defensive backs or defensive linemen for an impressive defense will cause your offense to go nowhere. Picking your team comes down to balancing both offense and defensive players, making some pull double duty as both defensive back and wide receiver or offensive and defensive linemen. Layering these street rule style gameplay changes over the already tried and true gameplay of your traditional Madden game makes NFL Street stand out amongst its competition most notably NFL Blitz, but these new gameplay tweaks are only the beginning of what makes NFL Street so unique. NFL Street places an emphasis on style. While this is exemplified in its presentation, it's also core to its gameplay. You can play NFL Street like your typical Madden game and have a decent time, but you'd be missing out on half the experience. That's where the arcadey elements start to come into play. Every action you take from getting a first down or recording a sack adds style points. There's even a button for players to hold down to increase the style of whatever action they're taking. Holding down the L1 on PS2, for example, while passing will cause the quarterback to throw behind his back or pull off a Patrick Mahomes-style no-look pass. While running, you can taunt your opponent with some sweet moves or 
when going up for a pass, make a catch that would even impress Odell Beckham Jr. Players still have access to mechanics such as jukes or stiff arms, now they can be performed with some flair. Not only are these cool to look at, but they add even more style points on top of everything else that occurred during the play. Pairing a behind the back pass for a first down mixed with a juke or a broken tackle, and a taunt all the way to the end zone will rack up more points than your standard play. The best thing about this mechanic is that there's a give and take with it. While performing style moves, there's a high risk it might blow up in your face. Getting tackled while taunting could cause a fumble, a no-look pass is less accurate than a regular one, a power tackle is far less accurate than a normal one, meaning an easy touchdown for your opponent. It's a risk versus reward type system that's fun to try and balance racking up style points without causing a drive to come to a screeching halt. The style points accrued from all this fun will fill up your game breaker gauge at the top of the screen. Game breakers are essentially god mode for the duration of that drive and have different effects on both offense and defense. It's always in the background and can be used somewhat tactically in certain circumstances. On offense, players become faster, harder to tackle, more accurate passers, and can catch basically anything. On defense, it causes players to intercept passes with ease, and most if not all tackles result in crushing blows or forced turnovers causing the offense to stop dead in their tracks. Game breakers can even cancel each other out, leading to moments where players might have to save their game breaker to nullify an opponent's. Needless to say, game breakers are extremely valuable, and knowing when to activate yours could be the difference in a game. NFL Street offers a few game modes that take advantage of the base gameplay in some interesting ways. First, there's your standard quick play, being able to jump right into the game by picking your team and the field. It's the fastest way into the action. A pickup game mixes things up a bit more, allowing you to pick your team of seven from over 40 randomized players, all with different skills. It can be fun seeing what random NFL stars you get to choose from and trying to build a competent team from that pool, fantasy football style. The NFL Challenge is the meat and potatoes of what NFL Street has to offer, though. A unique twist on your typical franchise or superstar modes, players are tasked with creating a team from scratch, including its name, logo, and color scheme, as well as its roster. The sheer amount of customization is pretty staggering for a PS2 football game. Renaming your players, adjusting their height or size, changing their headgear, shirts, or pants, as well as adding development points into several different categories like speed, passing, catching, or tackling ability. Once your team is in place, players can tackle a boatload of challenges to earn unlockables for new clothing options, passing and running plays, or even new fields to play on. These challenges can range from completing certain objectives like racking up enough style points, or performing things like two stiff arms or beating actual NFL or all-star teams. The more challenges you complete, the better you can make your team by improving their stats with dev points and unlocks along the way. While there's no story per se, it's fun to take a scrappy no-name team and build them up throughout the NFL challenge, all while unlocking useful content for quick play. And that content extends far beyond simple cosmetics. Making your way through the NFL challenge will grant you some extra teams on top of the 32 NFL teams. You have each conference's all-star teams comprising of the best of the best. My favorite has to be the NFL Legends, a team stacked with some badass Hall of Famers like Lawrence Taylor, Larry Zonka, Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, and Barry Sanders. While I've said the word style at least like 14 times up to this point, I'll use it one last time in terms of NFL Street's visual presentation. The art style for Street is unique to say the least, with players having exaggerated proportions and its liberal use of the word uniform as players are dressed in all sorts of different styles of clothing. On the field, players trash talk constantly, Come on, try and catch tackles are over the top and brutal sometimes, and after big plays, players will celebrate through quick yet charming little vignettes. That's how we do it, dog. First down. Graphically, I feel the art style for NFL Street holds up even now, sideline fans notwithstanding, of course. It doesn't hold up as well as something like, I don't know, Wind Waker or Okami, but compared to the Madden or 2K game at that time, it definitely still looks good. This extends to the fields you play on as well. Obstensively, they're all the same, serving as 100 yards of football space, but visually they're all unique while staying within NFL Street's main theme. Traditional football fields, beaches, parking lots, snowy back lots, and my favorite, a city rooftop. It's just another element that gives NFL Street more flair. And I can't end this video without talking about the soundtrack. While the background tracks during gameplay are catchy enough and amplify the action, the licensed music tracks are the real stars here. Much like most sports games, the tracks that play while perusing through menus or choosing your team are from licensed artists like Good Charlotte, Killer Mike, Wild Bunch, and Korn. Street's soundtrack leans heavily into the rap or alternative genres to emphasize the more hardcore nature of the game compared to its more realistic cousins. I'd recommend a listen to tracks like I Don't Care by Graf, Our Life by Wild Bunch, and Last Train Home by Lost Profits, since if I concluded them here like I usually do, I'd get copyright claim to oblivion. For some reason, I vividly remember when I was 12, going to the local mall which had a massive Toys R Us. I had the privilege of picking out one game I wanted and quickly grabbed NFL Street off the shelf. Being a new Texans fan at the time, and a diehard one today, and a lifelong gamer, it was a match made in heaven. What followed was some of the most fun I've had with a sports game, so much so I asked for the officially licensed NFL Street football for Christmas that year. I'm, I'm serious, I think I still have it somewhere in my parents' garage. While it might not have a brilliant narrative, expertly 
design levels or intelligent game design, NFL Street is essentially video games boiled down to its essence. Quick, rapid fire, dumb, pure fun, and even 15 years after release, it still rings true. Yeah. Come on.